Ну, во-первых, Юрий Гагарин, уже слетал Герман Титов, и они, естественно, были нашими первыми друзьями. А потом космическое братство, которое вот у нас сложилось э, с каждым полетом, оно особое. И там нет такого, что раз ты женщина к тебе как-то предвзято относится, ты коллега прежде всего. What I like to do is start by just putting some hot water, squirting it onto my scalp. And I have a mirror here so I can kind of watch what I'm doing. Then I just work the water up through to the ends of my hair. And I take my no rinse shampoo and squirt it also on the scalp and rub it in. Again, kind of working it out to the ends. And I'll actually take my comb to help work it all the way to the ends. I think that's pretty good. And now as my hair dries, as the water evaporates from my hair, uh, it will uh, become humidity in the air, and then our air conditioning system will collect uh, that into condensate, and it won't be long, and our water processing system will turn that into drinking water. I was just going about my normal routine, and in the course of one day, I talked to Moscow, I talked to Germany, I talked to Japan, and I talked to our two control centers in Houston and the one in Huntsville. And then I stopped for a second and I did have one of those moments of realization. It's like, wow, look what we did. We built this huge, huge monster laboratory orbiting the earth using country, you know, with cooperation from countries all over the world. And it took several years to train. I traveled to Japan, to Europe, to Russia, and around the US training for really almost three years to get ready for the mission. And that's actually worse in a way than being up here. They like to say that when I'm up here, at least they know where I am. And in fact, they have an application, um, where a computer program that they look at, and they know exactly where I am. And, and they go, Mom, you're going over Australia. So it's, it's pretty fun to be up here now where they know where I am. Here we are at the throne. And of course, it serves for two functions. Number two, right here. I'll show you. But you see it's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim. And this guy right here is for number one. So they're sort of two slightly separate functions, but you can do a little, essentially both, by hanging on right here and doing number one and number two. And of course, you do have your privacy. There's a little door. You have to accept the fact that you're remote and you're not gonna have that same, you know, that same level of hands-on kind of uh, input that you can down here. But uh, I think it, it, it's kind of neat. You just get a little bit more creative. You know, you use your phone calls in a way that I think you don't always want to be focusing on, you know, getting the homework yeah, yeah. done. It needs to be kind of a bigger conversation that you have with them if they want. I mean, you know, he might want to be going out and riding his bike when that phone call comes. So you should always dream big, really big. If you dream big and then back it up with hard work, then you're going to be very successful. En tout cas, au début, ne vous mettez pas vous-même des interdictions, des barrières. Essayez. Tentez, c'est vrai que c'est mieux quand les profs vous accompagnent, les doctorants vous accompagnent, les copains vous accompagnent, la famille vous accompagne, et que tout le monde vous, vous supporte vers le, le choix que vous faites. Mais ne vous mettez pas vous-même des, des barrières. C'est possible. Pourquoi pas Osez.